All right. Welcome back to another Serious Angler podcast, everybody. Uh, episode number 154. What's going on, Andy? Oh, not a whole lot. Uh, can finally go back to work, which I'm pretty happy about. So, uh, yeah. For people who don't know from last week's episodes, I don't think we even mentioned it, is we both got a COVID testing and we're technically, quote unquote, quarantined, which uh, was a whole interesting deal. And I'm not very political. You know that too. And Dude, I went so like New York's kind of strict with this whole COVID thing. And uh I had I was coming from Tennessee, so I was trying to be, you know, responsible and you know get tested and everything out of respect to my family. And dude, they they like treated me like I was like a dummy, a criminal when I walked into this urgent care because I was asymptomatic and I was like, well, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, they, they didn't care. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It was weird. But negative, so we're all good. <laughs> we're yeah, ready to roll. My daughter was kind of sick last week at the beginning of the week. So we took her to urgent pediatric care and she got tested. But by like Tuesday midday, she was back to her normal self and healthy. And we're both like, oh, she's going to be fine. That was a waste of time. Why did we ever have to do that? But uh, yeah, seven days later, we got the negative results in. Some other stuff. Got to get some doctor's notes and I can go back to work. Thankfully. Heck yeah. Before we get started, though, Forrest commented and said he has some news. Forrest has some news? Yeah, that's what he said. Wonder right, what Forrest, be sure to comment, and then uh, we'll, we'll put it up. I'm sure it's sarcastic. No one, Forrest, it's probably sarcastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited because today we have Mr. Chris Grow on, Fast Master Elite Series Pro, and uh, this is one we've been planning for a while, and uh, we're glad to get him on here. Uh, he's a good buddy of, of our good buddy. Mr. Steve Mui, who uh, I believe is joining us here tonight, at least in the comments section, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to make sure. I know I know Forrest knows knows Steve, and, and Zach knows Steve as well. They're in the comments, I see, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to rag on Steve a little bit here. But uh, before we do that, let's uh, let's get him on here, Mr. Chris Crow. What's going on, man? What's going on, boys? Good finally, evening. finally, we're getting this done. <laughs> yeah. uh, my this... bad, you know, I just like hunting way too much and then i'd be an airhead and i forget to call you but we got it i, I hope there's no harm no foul for both no oh. not at all i am i am one of the same my friend i uh i have the fever to get in the stand as well and i forget a lot of stuff yeah i i i'll put it right out there because i'm transparent with everybody i've had guests on here before and they're from California and I start you know recording and waiting for them and wondering why they're not showing up this is a long time ago but Wondering why they're not there, and I'll text them and be like, "Hey, you uh, you coming on tonight?" And like, I thought the show was in three hours because <laughs> it's yeah. the time difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm an airhead too, dude. Yeah. No, but it does, I swear you already know. I mean, you hunt. I see that. I mean, it's like they got something about. I mean, you know, for me, like you know, fishing's my life. But that time in the woods, like I I revert. It like refreshes my mind, and I'm just I love the chase of these big whitetails here in Illinois. Yeah. I do dumb shit. I do. Like, I mean, I neglect my girlfriend. I just, I forget dates, times, stuff like that. And I mean, that's so bad. I know I'm getting old, but shit. (laughs) You got deer fever and uh, you're losing your mind. Yes, but it like, I'm coming back grounded once December hits. Like, I had to slock that dough tonight just to get something out. And, you know, now it's really time to like hunt a little bit for horns, you know, and kind of stay uh, stay focused. Move forward fishing, do the sponsorship gig, holidays, and get ready to get ready to start cracking on them here come January. Heck yeah! Well, congratulations again on putting some meat in the freezer. Uh, venison is is always good, and you know uh, it. You know it. Oh you Backstraps are something like a necessity us northern boys need. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and you're in the you're in the land of the giants over there in, in Illinois. You are in some. Some big old country for some big old whitetails. I hear you, but I've I've had the saddest of saddest years, <laughs> boys. You don't even know. Like I, I'm just getting over this shit. Like it's my yeah. first year really deciding to gun hunt one of the farms that I can, and uh, the only reason being is I had some giants there, and to watch it go through uh, gun season and a couple uh, a couple of my big boys already dead. It was it was it's been heartbreaking. It's literally <laughs> that I got trail cams history with. It just sometimes it's like, 
And it seems like everywhere I go, there's someone that knows that farm. That, oh, do you hear the big ones next door? Yeah, I already fucking did. You know, like, oh, <laughs> just just stab me more. Yeah, so, uh, that's, that's what I'm like right now. So yes, we have giants, but I've got a lot of dead giants right now. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of it's an interesting topic too for those uh, who list who are listening that are, are big time anglers but aren't really into hunt into hunting hunting you know these guys in fishing like they'll go out chasing giants right they're gonna go out in pursuit of you know one giant bass well thing is you know that those bass might be down there but you can't see them the thing is for hunters you know these deer are there you're seeing yep. them you're seeing them on oh, yeah. trail cam you're building these patterns with them yep. so you're getting quote unquote a, a relationship almost you're these deer 100%, that, percent, yeah so when these stories come to an end it's kind of sad because like some of them these deer are seven eight years old i yep, mean 100 percent. yeah, yeah and they're it's, ancient it's, yeah, for sure and he, like you said that relationship trail cam pictures it becomes an obsession like mm -hmm. weird and then that's where the mind thing goes and i stop you know but i need that i need to like i need to like i don't know i'm not being dumb per se but i'm just resetting my mind you know especially you know like this year was just rough 2020 yeah. on the water like i had the fish on to be fishing the classic so i had to really really get the negativity out and like refocus and deer hunting whether i harvest an animal or not chasing those bucks and getting my mind totally off of that for whatever it is, three weeks, four weeks that I get to do it, it helps big time. Heck yeah. Well, we're going to get into that a little bit here. Obviously, we're going to switch gears to fishing. Uh, we're not the biggest hunting podcast out there. but uh, no, we're no, I got you. I fishing. got you. I just got deer brain. That's all. Oh, I, I'm right there with you, dude. Trust me. Uh, but uh, before we get too deep into here, man, what's uh, we want to hear You know how you got into fishing, You know that first time you went bass fishing, and you know, who got you into it? As for bass fishing, okay, I mean, my father got me into fishing, but like bass fishing, like going out and catching largemouth was definitely my grandfather on uh, my mom's side. Uh, you know, he enjoyed it. Uh, he was always semi-retired in Florida, you know, you know, fishing here and there, like little ponds, St. John's River, things like that. Fished a lot up here. So that was my first exposure to like, hey, let's go bass fishing. And I remember those times, you know, Kelly's plow jockey worm, three hook worm, that type of stuff, spinner bait. And I mean, I was young, I was really young, but then those catching those large mile transcended into me getting kind of hooked on it. And then uh, definitely my Canadian trips with my father uh, and grandfather, my other grandpa were the, were the huge, you know, cause now you're catching walleye and pike, but now I had this bass thing. So I was like, we need to go smallmouth fishing tonight, you know, like things like that. And Basically, all that started really, really hardcore at the, you know, at the age of understanding the species and directing towards them was seven, eight years old. So, but, you know, I was catching fish. Shit, they got pictures of me when I was like three and a half catching carp. I was definitely trophy, uh -huh. uh, trophy rough fish champion of the world. I started off as. Heck yeah. yeah. But what would you say, uh, you know, over there in, in Illinois, what would you say is your home lake, your home body of water? Oh, Fox Chain, for sure. Fox Chain yeah. is definitely it. And a lot of surrounding cool lakes, but you know, this is where, you know, this is where I fished for 10 years before I even had a driver's license. So all I had was a little seven and a half horse Merc and uh, my 12 foot uh, Sears rowboat, a little deck <laughs> made in the front, 25 pound thrust trolling motor. Get it, boy. <laughs> Heck Get yeah. It. We, we talked about it a little bit here offline before we started tonight. Uh, cause I kind of felt like a dummy that I didn't know what it meant, but I think anyone else besides myself that follows you obviously can't follow you and not see, you know, w whether it's on your boat, the, uh, or whatever the, you know, the hashtag chain rats. So for, for those like myself who don't know the full meaning of that, uh, if you would explain what chain rats. Sure. Do. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll sum it up quick is a chain rat, like an OG, OG, like I come from an area that's. You know, I know we all have our own niches of club tournaments and stuff like that, but like for some weird reason, this northern Illinois region, Channel Lakes area, back I'm talking 80s, you know, early 90s, there was Northland Bass, and they would pull. And I, I told you guys earlier, and this is no shitting you, because you guys know that BFLs are all over, all over the region, and those are draw tournaments basically, a pro and a co. These guys would pull 100 to 120 boats draw tournaments, you know, like, and these people would come out of the woodwork. So basically, 
the reason I say that tournament division is just the amplitude that the chain brought back in that time. I mean, we have big tournaments now, you know, 50, 60 votes, but nothing like that. Whereas you have to get some guy that had the ambition to fish out of the back of the boat and a guy to drive, whether he's from the other side of Chicago, Indiana, come to the chain with his Ranger or whatever boat he had at the time, you know what I mean? To fish right. as a pro-am. But basically what happened was you'd have these rats, like two, like there would be like four or five guys, old timers that just straight dominate. And they were basically the chain rats. And I was envious of them when I was younger because I didn't, you know, I had my sears. I was beating up on their fish. They're giving me the evil eye out there. And I had no clue, you know. <laughs> I work at the local tackle store, Triangle Sports, and just do what I got to do. Go out there and have fun, you know. And I started to get to know some of these guys. And basically, when I decided to say, screw this shit, I'm fishing the opens. I, I got to make a change in life. I want to try to make the elites. I kind of brought it back to fruition and really brought it into the fact that, you know, it's not, you know, yes, we still have chain rats. We have the five, six teams, you know, Dave Linton, Zach Schmiglitz, my partner, Jimmy Schmel, bunch of newcomers like, you know, Logan McKenzie, all these, all these guys that are getting, getting this shit. And now they're little chain rats and they're whooping ass, but it's taken on its own amplitude with the, yeah, as you see on the tour. And it's just, I don't know. It's, this place breeds a lot. Of, you know, you can, like I said, you can look up hashtag chain rats and there could be a girl in a bikini. It could be a guy slamming a beer. But it's majority it's fishing. Um, yeah. It's our environment here, this lake life. And I'll be straight with you. Chain rats are the locals, you know. Like like when you go out Sunday and there's dudes on the pontoon, not just fishing, families and stuff. They're chain rats because they grow up, they pay the taxes on the water. They take care of the water. And, you know, like we do have some people that come here and abuse it. And you guys probably do, too, where they just don't know what a garbage can is. And it just gets annoying. And us chain rats kind of, you know, we're all about, you know, keeping this place, up, keeping this place clean, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 I totally understand that one. But it's legend type shit. Like you, I, I, I we could sit here with stories. And I probably should at sometimes. I mean, I mean crazy ones. Like, see it in the future, story time with Chris Grow. Well, it probably <laughs> could be because you should see some of these. Like, I'm talking, I'm little, you know. I'm like 14, 15 fishing team tournaments. And there's like one dude specific, like the Langs. Like the Lang, uh, you know, the one Lang was really good. Bob Lang was really stud. But he's old man, old ranger, didn't give a shit. Go out on the takeoff. I watch him totally just smoke a dude, rear end his ass, you know. And just look at him and say, we'll worry about it at the way and who gives a shit? Let's go. Like, you're, you're moving too slow. Like, this is like 1987, 1990, no, no, 90s, early 90s. I'm like, holy crap, these guys don't give a shit. So it was cool. It was just cool to experience it and be a part of it. And, you know, for the, the group of hammers that are just straight rats here right now, they remember all that because that's how we came up. You know what I mean? Like, we fished as co's and in back of boats of like old time rats you know oh, let's bring the young guy from triangle so yeah this is how it went down heck yeah. yeah so so talk to us then you know from there obviously you went through the opens and you're on the elites now uh you know a little bit of a timeline of you know obviously you got into these derbies 14 15 years old and then you know from then until the opens you know did you hit just a bunch of club derbies and then decided once you got a, a boat good enough for the opens you just hopped right in or did you kind of work up into that no. I totally worked up, totally worked up, but I made my home base the chain all the time, you know, like I had a bad addiction, you know, and I, I mean, I, I, you know, as time went on, I stopped working at the shop. I guided a little bit, you know, ran a, he did a construction thing, ran a tile company, but always made that chain my home base to put a little dough in the pocket. You know what I mean? Like I had it, we had it pretty dialed, it's not saying we win everything, but that same group of five guys were definitely able to make a nice extra chunk of change to, you know, to support this habit that we have. Okay. Right. So that's kind of how that went. But then I started dipping my toe in a whole bunch of things. You know, I'd go fish BFLs on the Mississippi river. Um, and one thing is cool about the divisions that are out here, Northland bass continued, but it kind of like took over different hands, but all the tournaments out here, half of them would the championships would be here. Awesome. But the other half would be national circuits like English Choice and stuff like that. They'd go have the championship at Gunnersville, Chickamauga. They'd go different places. So that gave us a taste of all that, you know. So 
I'm not going to lie to you. Like I've been going, you know, even though my result was <laughs> to Gunnersville, I've been going to Gunnersville for a long, long time. And that was due to fishing of um, Angler's Choice regional events or, or club events here on the chain. But uh, <laughs> so what I basically did was me and my partner just started exploring. Like we would go and get in different team events, like opens. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Like we'd go up into Wisconsin, like Winnicani, Wolf River, fish a lot of opens there. Then basically we just kept fueling the fire, fueling the fire. And here's when things got nutty. Like we qualified for a championship on the cross. This is way back when it was like 2008. And we went there and just kicked ass, won a boat. And that like put the fire underneath both of us. And then that's when we just started getting into my partner always said one thing, you know, like we fish together, make lunch money. He goes, he goes at the end of the year, I want to be in three championships for three pieces of fiberglass. That's what Jimmy would always say. And it was a great motive and it put a piece of fiberglass in, almost put a, another one in, but we blew up our boat and that was a whole shit story. But oh, no. you get what I mean? Like, so like, this was a good additive and it did some killer stuff. Like we went to like, and you know, Seth wasn't fishing that lake really hard at the time, you know, but like Tonka, like we went there mm-hmm. and won the Minnetonka open there, you know, a bunch of idiots from Chicago land area go out there and we won that. So that was a you know big chunk of change and a, really good tournament to beat those yeah. guys because they're all studs and they're real mad at that yeah and that's i'll be honest with you, that was like that decision that, that tournament there that's how i made so many friends like i mean i know we won but like that's how i made friends like andy young you know like all them old timers like james linder like stuff like that and it was just a cool that event was cool but then that's basically how we did it's just got in as many team tournaments as we could rolled at the chain went into little jackpot tournaments where we know we can win. I mean, I'm going to cherry pick a little and do that type stuff, <laughs> have fun. And then we went into the Cabela series, which was nice. That's still going on, which is the NABC. And that was all across um, Wisconsin and Minnesota. Did that, did okay. And then in the meantime there, that's when I just decided to like, Hey, I want to do this, you know? So, right. And I mean, I'm not going to lie to you here. I mean, this is a shit way of saying it, but I got a kick and swift kick in the ass when I lost my old man because it makes right. you think. Sounds weird, but it makes you think about like what you're doing. I was really happy with what my job was at the time, but I'm I'm like I got I got to give this a shot. I can't be six year old, six years old, and say I didn't do it. You didn't give right. it a shot. So like, you know, God rest his soul. But that what kind of made me put the construction life on hold burn up a bunch of money, freaking be indebted to my mom until I'm freaking dead. Cause you know, I'll probably, she'll probably outlive me. Um, but here I am now. And then just, you know, got back on the opens thing, still fish shit at home and, you know, just did what I had to do work, household in between there, the same home, same home. But then the opens just kind of, I got a dash of good luck. I got a taste of it actually in that first year, just missing qualifying. And then the second year I said, screw it. I'm doing every, I'm doing all three divisions. And then I qualified. Heck yeah, that's awesome. So for those who you know, might be listening or watching this and are, you know, wanting to take that that route into you know tournament fishing and make that a, make that a career, how important is it? Because you, you mentioned how uh, awesome that event was on Minnetonka, where you met all these guys and now you're friends with all these different people. How crucial is it as an angler to network and make these different connections? Huge, huge. Huge. My now, yes, yes. Um, yeah, you got to, because it, it, you're going to find yourself. I understand in the elites, you know, the no info and stuff like that, but I'm talking not like networking and friendship. Like you, especially you meet these guys on the opens and, you know, a lot of you, you develop like, you know, some of these guys, I never thought that I'd be traveling with like JP Kimbrough, like when he was fishing the open stuff like that. Like I'm meeting new friends and we're working together and you are also like, for me, I'm being straight. I, if you know, I'm a realist, I've been struggling the last three years on this and it's, I'm finally getting close to the pieces together. I'm just not putting my fish in the boat, but I, I'm being straight here. Okay. As an angler, like these young anglers are ready. I wish, like I went and fished FLW when I was 28 and I came really close to making it. And I wish I would have, I stayed with it but I got a taste of the money and the construction got a taste of this being a little crazy of a pipe dream sort of, but like always kept in the back of my head. I'm being straight. I know what happens to all you guys, but like, I kind of put it on hold. And I wish I didn't then because 
shit I went through sometimes. I'm being strict. I was partying my ass off, having a good time, not thinking I was ever going to go pro again. You know what I mean? And just living a good life, you know, got a house, got a successful business. And you kind of like put it on the back burner. And like I said, the whole thing with my dad happening. But what that did is like you, I don't want to say, you just get a fire under your butt and you want to just, you want to just kind of move forward with it. So I kind of just, I don't know. I just, I took that route. I don't know. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. We all so, have different motivating factors. What, so, you say, what was that again? I said we all have different motivating factors. There's yeah, always I, something that lights that fire. Yeah, I, and the thing is, it's just you don't – I knew I was good enough, but, like, what I'm trying to get at is, like, where I'm at in age and with these young anglers, like, you have to take in perspective, like, my age and the time that I did get out of it for a minute there, still fished here, but I wish I could have done that because I feel I'd be in a better place now. Um, that's why I'm really excited for 2021 because I, I'm a realist. It is what it is this year. Like I don't make the I don't make the fucking classic. It's it's done. This is done. And you know, then I got to think about you know you know getting back to work or should I guide again? I got to make decisions. But right. right now, the devil's on my shoulder. Like we're that's a bad conversation. And, and I mean, I'm doing it on a podcast, but it's the truth, and I have to be reality of it. So I'm kind of going out this year and fishing exactly like I did this year because I fished so goddamn good. I just never lost big fish, but every single goddamn tournament, I lost a fish or two that cost me. And your state was a perfect example. I left 19, 20 pounds on the table the first day and coming with 13 with two dead fish. I looked like a goddamn cat fisherman out there. It was pathetic. I So, like, I left a lot out there, but I'm trying to shake it off as much as I can, if that makes sense. And, like know that I had the right bites, but I feel like I've always been a little bit behind the eight ball from not, if that makes sense, not uh, going there when I was 28. If that does, if that, I mean, you're yeah. young, baby. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean, like, and I guess what financially I wasn't there. There's no way I had to start doing something or my, my parents are looking at me like, what the hell is this kid doing? You know? So, yeah, you know, I mean, I get it, man. Some of these kids that do have the goal, you know, on the silver spoon and it's able to do it. And just go, go, go. Shit. I mean, how do you compete sometimes? You know? <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. That, uh, that term that you mentioned, was that, uh, and I think Andy tried to, to ask you, was that Champlain or the St. Lawrence? Well, uh, that was um, that was St. Lawrence. St. And Lawrence. This was the saddest day. You know, I mean, I was just, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I posted a couple of those I lost, but just just dumb. Like I couldn't believe it. And then the next day I come in with 20, you know what I mean? And that was a grinder. That was a tough St. Lawrence. It was a little stingy. Was Those like, fish are really, really finicky. I mean, I fished uh, a event there in August and I had a buddy that was fishing 40, 50 foot and brought, brought up a five pounder and fighting, fighting. And then right at the end, it came to the surface and just didn't move at all. Just dead. It was the weirdest thing. Some of those fish are just super, super sensitive. I, I don't know. I don't know how to, no, I hear you. I hear you. It was just, it's the failure of them coming off. And it just, like I said, I got to get out of this conversation as fast as I can because I'm trying to stay positive. But I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a realist and I talk about it. It's just pathetic. Like I never lost like one of them. Like I lost a giant at St. Lawrence. That was it that I had in my hands. But it, other in the year, it was just like, holy cow, two and a half pounder here that I need. Three pounder here, 15 incher to make a limit. Here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it just got frustrating. But the thing is, you got to take the positives out of the situation and know that I've been around them. And, you know, people ask me, what are you going to change? Like, did you, is it your hooks? God, I lost these fish on everything from a shaky head to a frog. So I can't sit there and say, oh, it was my crankbait hook. Yes, if I lost eight fish on a crankbait, we talk about trebles. But right. it's going from everything from a drop shot to a tube. Like, it was just bad luck. Oh, yeah, just, no, you have no idea. Like, I'm ready to. Oh my fucking god! Like, well, thankfully, next year is a new year. No, hundred percent. And it's just I got to go in there with a clean slate, but like a clean freaking mind. Like knowing that, just like just fucking catch them, bro, and don't have one single bomb. Make your bomb be a sixtieth. You know what I mean? Like no bomb, no no Champlain bombs where you have an amazing practice, and then game day, all you're catching is two and three quarter pounders. It's like this is fucking nightmare 
you're getting you're getting a lot a lot of support here in the comments. So I think you know 2021, you're going to be going with a, some some fire. Some people are going to have to look after you. That's for dang sure. Because I mean, I'm I'm telling you, I'm banger bust. That's it. Either I'm going to shit the bed and it's all going to be over, and we can worry about tying a noose then. But uh, well, don't tie it. That's never good. No, I'm not good at them. <laughs> but um, the main thing is is just. I want to just come out. I don't want to just trickle in and take 39th place and make a I want to fuck them up and be in top 20, you know? I know I can be yeah. a little bit of year. I don't have that. I'm just not that good of an angler because I'll fuck that up big time somehow because my brain just is too scattered. But I could definitely do a top 20. I know I can overall. And that will just watch out then because then I won't give a shit. And then the following year, then we can maybe get an A-Live. But I'm just... I need to wreck them this year and just really fish, really flow. I mean, it's my roommates help me so much. They're the best people, individuals in the world. You know, I mean, Corey and Chris are a little dumb, but I love them. But it's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? They are the most positive people with me. And, and it feels good that you're developing patterns during the, you know, in the room. And they're going off those patterns because they see your confidence. And you know what I mean? Like we're helping each other, of course. But, you know, they don't underrate the freaking Yahoo's that's lowest in AOI. They, they have a lot of belief in me and a lot of strength. And we it's it feels freaking awesome because those guys are all freaking studs. So Heck, yeah. No, 100%, dude. Yeah. Well, and going off of that, then, you know, as an angler, if you kind of can reflect back, I mean, what, what, do you, what would you say is your biggest strength and your biggest weakness? My biggest strength? Uh I would say, I would say definitely my biggest strength would probably be dock fishing. Like, I don't mean to sound, look at Cody. What up, Cody? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, the, uh, that dude's a great dude. Me and him. Yeah. I'm, I'm super glad to meet him. He's a good, good, good dude. Uh, but I'm not just saying like dock fishing, but flipping and in, in general, uh, I feel this year, and over the time, like me finding isolated cover, whether it be a dock, lay down, like that saved my ass this year. A lot of intuition fish came this year, driving down the lake, like, and I learned that from fighter, just, he's just like jerk the wheel. You feel it, you know, Great. and I just, I feel that that was a strength this year. And I hope that was a good one to carry on, but I would say flipping, not necessarily fighter style grass and stuff, but you know, you put 20 pounds, you know, you put, you know, 20 pound Berkeley floor carbon in my hand. Seven foot three, medium heavy, five sixteen ounce jigger craw, you know, or really been liking that max scent. Uh, the hell is it, that creature hog or whatever the max scent one? Yeah, yep. I, like you give me something like that, I could really dissect some shit, and I will, you know, I'll hurt you. Um, but other than that, I'm, um, I mean, I would say the strength, mega strength is top water because I don't uh, knock on wood, I don't lose many. Um, I'm pretty good at, you know, hookups and getting them in the boat. I lose them when my team partner's in the boat because he runs his fucking miles too much. And <laughs> he tells me that this hook don't work, this hook don't work. And then we hook into a big one, and then I lose it. And I predict I'm going to lose it as soon as he stands there. He might as well just keep fishing. So <laughs> you know, it cost us some money. I cost you this money, but it's you. It's your mental shit. So. <laughs> but other, than that, other than that, we're good. Like, I would take out the top water. I'll drag him in backwards no matter what, but that kid's in the boat, we're in trouble. Cause dude, we were blessed when we won that goddamn boat. He caught two, four pound smallmouth on a spook. You believe that shit? Like, <laughs> same time? Come on. Same thing. Yeah. Two, a 398 and a 402 smallmouth. Dude, I never man hugged someone in my life. So since then we're in the boat together, you don't throw top water. It ain't worth it. Like dude, a giant will jump over it and he'll just look at me. He goes, huh? See, that fucking sucks. <laughs> 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 like, like dude, so it's like not even worth it. And then he'll show up in the boat with a top water or something himself. I'm like, what are you doing? This is not going to work today. Just put the crankbait back on. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that would be. And then weakness. Weakness that I'm feeling is not my weakness anymore, but I feel it is my weakness. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, yeah I get that. Finesse, but I am getting so damn good at it. These, these, I'm, I'm you got to watch out. Like, I am getting it. And then I, I learned that definitely from Gussie, like Gussie's a finesse maniac, and he, yeah. always, has, he, he always has this like we're all like freaked out, like oh my god, this fall, like, oh we're gonna catch one, 
he's got always oh, got some bait that he's you know what I mean and like bro you have to throw this and you do it just <laughs> like this yeah so it's awesome so like finesse wise I feel I'm getting really really good at it hooking up really confident in it you know like I first got on the elites I jeez that was that was a downfall which I probably should have picked up if I picked the damn spinner bait up more I mean not spinner bait uh finesse bait up more that first year, I probably would have made a lot more cuts and probably would, you know what I mean? I just kept mm-hmm. staying at chain mentality. Like, oh, come on, yeah. flip, frog. I remember yeah. reading an article, I don't know, like seven, eight years ago. It was Cody Meyer. Okay. It was a LW article. He goes, I don't win a lot of tournaments, but I always make money because I finesse fish my way to a check. Dude, that dude's a stud. He will yeah. finesse any fish. Yeah, I mean, it, he'll pull up to a bridge pound and let eight guys fish. And he'll go up there and catch a three-pound spot of bass. Yeah. He's also got four-and-a-half-pound test. Takes some 12 minutes to reel the fish in. But guess what? He gets a mess. He's got a happy wife and a fat-ass bank account. Heck he, yeah. No, yeah. no. No. <laughs> so you're in our boat. Got it. Yeah, I'm going to go donate blood soon and semen. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do no i have to i'm trying my best fighter told me about the semen donation so oh, he's a lot. <laughs> he, he put on a more stud fair because his parents you know, his parents want something like, like that just a good That's looking funny. hippie you can catch bass. <laughs> i'm just a good looking hippie i'm trying to catch bass <laughs> i think you're a pretty fair job at that so um let's re back up here let's talk about max sense some more because the deal what what makes it so much better than everything else? Everyone knows about the flatworms. Yeah, but- yeah, the max on itself, and I'm you know I'm I'm a realist here. I will, and you know my sponsors, whatever. I'm not saying this because I'm with them and they pay me, but I will never throw a Senko ever again in my entire life. Never, never. There is no point. The rate of fall, um, the fact that on a general. Max Scent General, like I'm, I'm, we're going straight here. I hate a regular General from Berkeley. Not a fan. Not a fan. Don't like the way it falls. I can't get bit on it. I, I know Brad's going to kick me in the ass for it, but the Max Scent, I mean, it's it's the deal. And here's the best thing about it is the rate of fall. Okay, um, you can eco it, all that fun stuff. The fact that it's Max Scent and it just smells awful, and they hold on to it forever. Um, and that's a great thing for taking kids fishing. I'm not trying to get all weird with you, but you're taking your kids fishing. Got to have something max then. So they can let that fish eat it, you know, that type thing. But here's the coolest thing about max then. Some of the colors, like the black and this purple, you catch a bass. I pray that, that I can k- use it again. Because from their mouth mauling on it, from their crushers, it makes them glow. Like the black, like, glows. It is, it is money. And... You know, I you know I could get them in trouble, but I I have some roommates that can't they, they can't live without it either. So like they understand, and you know what I mean. Like this is this was this is the real deal, and they're starting to expand that max on in so many things. Like this year at uh, Detroit, that jerk nose. Like okay, so like they wanted you know you get them on the flatworm, and then they had flat nose minnow, which was nice. But I used the bigger flat nose minnow. And I was, and that I was in max scent, and that was that hologram blue, and that I was hot on that. We know about the flatworm, the creature hog. Uh, another thing is uh, the jig trailer. Uh, the chunk is really, really nice, really nice, holds up well. But they have a meaty chunk, which is just lays perfectly on a jig. You dab a little glue or whatever keeper brand jig you're using. Uh, it, it, it skips nicely. And that's another thing there too. If I can get through a fish or two, it sounds weird, but they look better when they get mashed up a little bit. So they get, they get wrinkly, like texture. They get weird. They have this like glow that comes out. And in here especially, okay. You know that New York colored water, that champlain water. Places like that in the water we have kind of here, like in the north. I feel it really, really like it glows again. Like, and, and that's, that's a huge thing. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There are some max on baits that I'm not using and maybe I should. Um, but basically that meaty chunk, that general and that creature hog, you know, on the flatworm, of course, I can't really go without, I mean, it's, they are the deal and Berkeley came up with something magical there. And, you know, I mean, you're getting guys on stage 
with other sponsors talking, you know, telling them that they caught him on this. I mean, that's I think the big shows just Paul shows. Miller. Yep, that's what I mean. Yeah. He's gonna bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's gonna tell. I mean, dude, it's it's something about it. And the thing is, you can keep it so simple. Yes, they got some cool colors they're coming out with, but just keep you can keep it simple. Green yeah. pumpkin, black and blue with that, and you know the black, but the purple for some reason. Like here on the chain. That purple is just straight fire. That June bug color. I like that June bug. That too. Color. That too. And that glows a bunch once it gets eight. Oh, yeah. That one does. That one glows a bunch. So, yeah. well, like, I mean, they hold up. You would think that they get small. You know, they hold up pretty good, which is fine with me. I mean, a Senko don't hold up. They hold up way better than a Senko with an O-ring. Oh, you're telling me. That dude's here in Cha-Ching every time a 12-incher comes. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's kind of cool too, and I think that's why it kind of adds to its effectiveness is, you know, the more it gets chewed as well, the more realistic it looks. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. More movement it gets. Yeah, I mean, it's a. I just like I said, I'm 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 very impressed with it, and I, I will never go back to Senko, whether my career ends or not, or whatever goes down. I will be a Max Center for life. So, I'm a believer. Yeah, and Chris, Chris here mentioned the you know, same deal on the Mississippi River. I've noticed the chewed up plastics tend to get more bites than a fresh one out of the pack. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. I mean, I, I guess you know, it would make sense. You know, you rip it right off and put a fresh one on, but that makes sense. There's no point, and there's no point. And maybe it exposes it more. I would love to see more on how they do the studies with it there, you know, and I know uh, through Lake Iowa, like how, you know, like does it attract them? Because, I mean, it's. It's got to be putting something off. I mean, it smells like shit, guys. It's like, like, <laughs> Spider not- says it smells like nuts. And I mean, I don't know from the <laughs> short time he was in prison if that was. <laughs> and he's like, huh. no, no, my brain is just, I'm, I'm thinking it, the more it gets chewed up because they're so infused with that max thing. Oh, it's yeah. in your hands. Just stink afterwards. Of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's probably once they start getting chewed up, it's got to hit that water and it just oozes. It must. Up. That's what I mean. Only thing that's I'm the thing. Out. Like you said, you're trying to like, you know, the one thing, this is a good tip for everyone, the guys that listen or whatever. I think it's one of the best Ned rigs ever. And that's, what's nice. If you do get one chewed up, if you're back at that end, I'll save a bag and I'll, I mean, I get it. I'm getting them for free, but I still don't care. I'll cut a bunch of Ned rigs and put them back in the bag and they're brand new worms because he didn't, I didn't put a hook through that area. You don't get to the St. Lawrence river. I've got a badass Ned rig. With well, hell, it's better for the environment too. <laughs> Yeah, it's freaking like it's like candy, like crack to them. So. <laughs> this is not a good comment here for you. What's yeah. that? Who is it? Go for it, Andy. Uh, you want to put it up on the screen? Yeah. Oh, God. So this Chris, he says, do a field test, take a max scent plastic, throw it in your mouth and chew it up. Then let us know how if it works. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That'd be just very disgusting. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're talking I viral could right there. We, we, could, we could do a challenge. You never know on my IG. But, you know, yeah, I guarantee it's just going to just – it's not going to be good. <laughs> Face testing with Chris Grow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I might – there might be serious. I might get some kind of side effect from that, but I'm not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever we gotta do, Max Sent. Yeah. 100%. Berkeley tells me to do it. I'm chewing on one. I don't care. Yeah. I got you, Chris. <laughs> Andy, you got anything for Chris here before I hit him with another question? Oh man, go ahead. So <laughs> I know I, <laughs> I asked you your strengths and weaknesses, but I'm curious, you know. Making that switch to the Elite Series, going professional, are there any challenges being at that top level? Obviously, on the water, you know, you're competing uh, with the fish, you're competing with, you know, other guys that are on the Elite Series. But if you can name a challenge that maybe somebody didn't think of, whether it's on the water and also a challenge of off the water as an Elite Series angler, what, what would you say those are? Well, a challenge on the water is, and it's, it's, straight up a little bit here is and i'm not trying to make excuses keeping up with i am not trying to say my age or anything but you got to keep up with these electronics that's that's probably the hugest thing um it, it's ever changing ever fast you see the straight domination uh, of, of you know some of these graphs i, I feel you got to really that is huge in itself just keep absorbing knowledge with that. And I don't care what brand it is. And I'm glad I'm, I'm happy to have had both brand, a couple brands to be sponsored by. So I know them and I could still work with them because 
I, I think that's that's one of the huge one of the biggest things, especially with the ever changing. You got these young anglers that come in, and this is like second nature to them. Like you, you know, probably not a regraph better than me, but that 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 that's the hugest one I would say. And then you're saying my other question would be what now? Would biggest be, challenge off the water. Off the water, um, I don't think it's a. I mean, yeah, I guess it's a challenge, but I feel that your routine, um, keeping the same, that same routine, like you're like when you're on the road, like, you know, your practice, your rigging, you know, just keep rolling through it. Don't let, uh, I'm not saying challenge, but like at that time, it sounds bad, but like, and, and, and I don't know if I've been guilty, maybe I have, but like try to let the outside go for that, that period. You know what I'm trying to say? Like Tiger Woods is not worrying about, paying a bill or some something on you know three nights before the masters you know what i mean like so like you got to take all those and we have a great routine you know the way we're all you know on the same deal so it's just like you're rigging you know you feel like you got to change line on that rod change it don't second guess yourself because i've done that and broke a fish off you know like who gives a shit if you got to have the headlamp on the bugs are biting you do everything the same correct order don't cut any steps just keep rolling just and i think it's easier said than done but you need to just keep you need to keep rolling because sometimes you get in these events where it's just like you're down or you a lot of times for me i shit the bed day one and it's hard to you know i run back have a beer or two and then i'm like you know you you start to like you'll slack for a minute because it all sucks but you got to be like screw that i'm gonna catch 30 tomorrow like you know i need to retie this knot i need to retie this fg knot i need to put line on this like keep Boom, boom, boom to the bitter yeah. end until it's over. I don't give a shit. Just keep going. Yeah. So. And that, that's one thing I've, you know, you, you talk about, uh, you know, keeping a routine is I've heard uh, some anglers talk about how it can be pretty difficult to live a healthy lifestyle while traveling, you know, professionally. You know, like, you know, whether it's eating, oh right, how, how easy it is to get lost in, no, for sure. you know, having fast food and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, we, we see that, but we also, I'll be straight with you, yes, we're guilty of it. I mean, I am too, but we try to cook a lot too, and Gussie's, like, he's a really healthy eater, so he'll cook, Um, but I'll, I'll be straight with you. I, I live with a bunch of ballers, you know, these dudes, these guys can catch checks in their sleep, so we usually, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I'm a little fat ass, you know, and we go to some damn good spots, I'll tell you that, so, and, uh. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's the only good thing about low man on totem pole. You know, you don't pay much, so it's a good thing. So, so uh, culture, but, uh, yeah. Blessing. You know, that's why I want to change things. You know, I want to start whooping ass and paying for these guys. But yeah, no. But yeah, as for that, we do try to eat in, at the place and, and eat some stuff. We go out to some good dining. Totally lucky on that end. But we've also had some really cool places we've gone to. These people, like when we're in your neck of the woods. You know, we stayed over by uh, Tommy and Michelle's at Bridgeview there. And it was every night, like it was me, Zaldane, the Johnstons, Buddy Gross, Ryan Schmidt, Seth Fighter. We'd all go in there and eat like a five course, awesome meal, dessert, home cooked. And that is the, the you know, that's awesome. Um, none of us eat breakfast, but except Gussie, you'll like swallow like, three grapefruits whole and have a little thing of granola. But other than us, we're pretty much coffee and roll. Um, we make gourmet sandwiches. Um, me and Seth Fighter, if things ended, would definitely have a job at like Subway. So we're <laughs> sandwich artists, I would say. So like you go from that and, you know, we make really good sandwiches during the day. Really, really good. Are you like one giant club sandwich during the day or do you pack like four of them and just no, shout? That's the difference. I do the one big sandwich and this kid will do three elegant little tiny sandwiches and chips what? and everything. 31 slices. Bacon. <laughs> no, no, we're uh, uh he gets the uh, fighter gets up by you, he gets really, really picky on getting uh your guys' roast beef because you have really good roast beef in New York. So like that's he'll go and buy like six pounds and we only eat three of it, but he's really excited about it. So <laughs> um so he's a roast beef kind of guy. Yeah, get, fun. yeah, no, he'll get oh dude, we do it right. We yeah, trust me, I like I said, sandwich artists, like literally. No problem making twelve fifty at Subway if this all ends. I would go, or maybe Jersey Mike's. I might be a step up in the world. Now, Jersey Mike's—that's what I'm talking about. That's good. Goddamn 
sandwich artist right here and fighter is too. So <laughs> yes, we eat good then, but like at night, like I said, if we, you know, some of these people take care of us. Awesome. But yeah, it does suck. We try not to be like, you know, going to McDonald's and stuff. You know what I mean? We try not to do that. We really, really don't because I, I can't stand fast food sometimes on the road. But what's nice in the South is you can find some really cool little spots that have a good barbecue. You know what I mean? Like, you're not necessarily eating hot, healthy, but you're not sitting there eating burgers from McDonald's. You're eating, you know, a brisket or something. So I get down with a brisket too. Mm. Oh man, you have no idea. Some of these places, it's and you, and some of the seafood we get. Like I'm just, yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely. Uh, I might have to start jogging with my old lady because I'm getting a little bit of a tank. <laughs> I know I was talking about healthy lifestyle, but have you ever had a garbage plate up this way? What? Oh no! What is this now? Oh, okay. So if you if you guys come <laughs> back up to KU, you're gonna have to. If you ever go to the Rochester area, you gotta get a garbage plate. Oh gosh, this sounds evil. What is it? It's it's like it's hamburger patties with uh, with salad, mac salad, and you mash it all up together. Wow. And it, it's got like a special sauce too. I don't even know what it is. Is this, is like, is this everywhere or is this only in certain places? Is it like it's certain like places only a Rochester like? thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Huh? so it's called, what is it called again? A garbage plate. Garbage it's like a midnight drinker's food haven. It sounds like the next day just a shit storm. Just don't bad. eat it before the start of the tournament. Eat it at the end of the tournament on your way home. Oh, thanks. Okay, so I can experience some of the best uh, travel porta potties there are in the world. I guess it depends on who you are, though, because I've never had an issue with that. But I, maybe well, that's look at you, Bailey. You're all spring and chipper over there. You got great teeth. You're all there. <laughs> you're moving, you're moving forward, Bailey. <laughs> um, it's it's actually it's really good, and uh, the, you, there's actually like breakfast versions that I've seen people put out too, which is insanely good but well, yeah good. if, if like, you're up this way again you're gonna have to stop and try it well that's crazy so you guys got that there and then like brian the carpenter's got that he had us eating me and fighter when we were in jersey that scrapple or whatever yeah i've i've heard of that i don't know that's what it scary. is scary it's like the shit of it's like the leftovers on the grill and the it's and they press oh. it together uh -oh. it's a trippy thing but i mean it wasn't bad but like he was like looking at us glowing his eyes like Got to try this. This is this is heaven. <laughs> yeah, I was nervous, but we are good. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So was it good or not good? It's good. I just the idea of what the hell it was was scaring the shit out of me. And it was like perfect, like rectangle, like just this thing of lard and fat, just fried, like <laughs> like a perfect hash brown of. What? <laughs> I know, but it was okay. Yeah. You know what I mean, you dip it in ketchup, like it's not. But, like, everyone knew about it. Like, these kids are born on Scrapple, or I think that's what Scrapple Yeah, Scrapple. Right. <laughs> that's I think I would take the garbage plate. Yeah, it sounds like the garbage plate's right up my alley. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, and we're definitely coming to New York, and, I mean, that schedule's going to be out soon. I've got a feeling that Caillou may be on there just because of the cancellation last year. So, well, I, I think they're supposed to have, like, an every other year contract from, like, a little grapevine I heard. So, Who knows? But you know the whole COVID thing. I mean, I'm sure and well, we're supposed to be there. So yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I'm just as good as you. I'm glad they didn't put the schedule out because you don't want every open guy to already know what's going down. So let this week, you let this week at lay happen, and then they could put it out. I can see them announcing it on like the final day. I could see that completely, completely. Yeah. Right. Well, that'd be cool. To uh, see the schedule and what's to come, and oh, hopefully, could be, an open there. could be an open there, you know, something who knows. But that open might be too fucking many people for that place, yeah. They yeah. did an open there one time, and I think uh, Pete Gluzak won it. Oh, he's a stud, he's a stud, Black Sanko. Ooh. Black Sanko in the weeds. <laughs> I remember they asked him on an episode, What's his favorite flipping bait? The top three, and he goes, Black Sanko, Black Sanko, and Black Sanko. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, it's all the guy throws. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Fair but uh, yeah, if any of the the viewers uh, or listeners have any last questions here for Chris, get them in now. Andy, you got anything left for Chris before we hit him with our last question? So I know the elite schedule isn't out, but what would be your perfect elite schedule for 2021 that lines up to the way Chris Grow wants to fish? 
last year's real schedule. <laughs> that bad. I just, you know what I mean? Like, but uh, I don't know. Maybe throw a. I don't know. I got a place that's got to be good to me sometime. Maybe throw Sturgeon Bay in there. Maybe throw a lacrosse in there for me. I mean, I like the ones that are there. We're coming to Waddington for sure. You know what I mean? Because uh, contract wise, um, that's what a five year contract or a seven. Yeah. It was a late five or seven, something like that. Um, hmm. I'm sure we're going to, I'm, I'm pretty much hundred percent sure we'll be going to Placa again. I like that place. And I feel like, I, I feel like I'm old there that I could do good there. Like I've like, you know what I mean? I made the cut last year there, but I also lost a freaking mega, you know? So hmm. I just think if I can put one of them big ones in the boat each day, I can fill a limit there pretty easily with the spots I got. I think we can uh, do a little damage there, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, something like that. And and get me back in New York. I want to get back to Champlain. Like, take an 80th there, just straight up, like, it was a train wreck nightmare. I mean, like, I felt so good there. So get me back there. And like I said, much more calls waiting for me, Waddington. Heck, yeah. This yeah. Like, I'll bass. In your traveling house, is there plenty for lowest guy? Or not making cut is there plenty? What is that like taking out? Tra- oh gosh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, no, you know, Chris, Chris you're not like really hard on himself when he's when he's down. So like those guys, kind of it's weird. He'll stay away. I get a lot. Of, I get a lot of awkward hugs. So no, I don't get many. I don't get much di- discipline for being shitty. So, but. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we, we, we are good. We cha- we really split the chores halfway decent. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, we, we do. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty nuts this year. We'd leave a lot of the work to Corey because he'd be fishing for four days. So he'd have to clean up and lock up the house before we all left. So, <laughs> um, But, uh, yeah, no, we, we split the chores up pretty good. We're, we're pretty good. Like, I mean, Gussie hates a dirty kitchen. So, like, he's Aunt Jemima, everything. You know what I mean? He, like, makes everything nice and tidy. So. Heck, yeah. Uh, Houston Gaddy here asks, uh, you remember the day on Gville, you smashed them and I got sick. Would you want to come <laughs> Yeah, he's a good, you're going to have to watch out for this kid. This kid will definitely be in your lease in five, you know, five to six years. A uh, good kid. I had him as a co, yeah, not a co, he's a marshal, but he's like totally got sun poison, but he's trying to deny it. So like not worry me, but he was, really <laughs> and we had, we had a fun day. Like it was cool. Like, uh, he filmed one of the bigger ones. I call it like a six and I got it on drop shot on real light line. It was funny. He filmed it really good. But as soon as I bear hug it and the hook comes out, you know, I got her head. You just hear his little voice. Yes. <laughs> like, because he came in without, you know what I mean? Coming off. And I thought that was awesome. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he's a good, good kid. And his, yeah. And his family's really, really cool. Yeah. No, it's uh those are things you meet, you know, like I've got a handful of uh, marshals I stay in contact with and he's definitely one of them. So. Heck yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. He's a little hammer, man. He's, he's uh, from Georgia. He's going to, he's going to be one to reckon with, you know. Good to know. We'll be watching out for him. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Heck yeah. Well, Chris, our last question here for you before we wrap things up for tonight. Uh, yes, it's one that we like to ask everybody who's new to the show. What's what? that, Andrew? I feel like we could go all night with this. This is like endless story time. It's oh, well, it feels good. Right, you guys are comfortable. And, I mean, it's, you know, like I said, prior having, you know, a couple, a couple of northerners in the room, it's pretty much smooth, you know, smooth sailing. So. Heck, yeah. You're, you're always welcome on the show, man, 100%. Anytime, anytime. I apologize for being an idiot in the tree too much. And then that road. <laughs> we'll get you out there. So, yeah, I'm glad we got everything stitched out and made it happen. It's awesome. Heck, yeah. But, uh, yeah, our last question for you, dude, is uh, if you could sit down, have a steak, have a beer with uh, three different individuals, whether they don't even they don't have to be fishing industry, but uh, they don't have to be currently present. They could be alive 400 years ago. Before Christ in yeah. your any time of the world. If I can sit down with three, three individuals. Three different people, have a steak, have a beer, and pick their brain, what three people are you going to invite? Oh. Uh, Definitely 100% Michael Jordan, just because the dude is just epic, and I'm sure that I can get something from him, whether it be tips with the ladies or how to dunk a basketball. But I'm just being straight. That dude's that dude's on fire, no matter what. Yeah, mentality. Uh, next has got to be, you know, next has got to be fishing related, and that would probably 
you know, most likely be Rick Klon. Uh, even though I talk to him and, you know, I already have a dream come true that I give the dude knuckles in the morning, you know. But I just, I, I you know, you guys already know. That dude gives yeah. me chills. He's, he's straight up amazing. And the third one, holy cow, third one, one more person. Uh, it'd be an odd one. Just because he just he don't exist anymore, and I, I I like his music, and I'm not getting all weird on you guys, but probably would be probably just from the, you know the his philosophy side of life and what this world needs more a little bit. It'd probably be Bob Marley. If I sit down, and probably, sure. I'd probably have more than a beer with him, but uh, sure. his yeah. <laughs> it is 2020. Yeah, oh no, 100%. But I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah. I did, you know, I studied him and did some reports when I was in college on him and stuff. And it's not just the music, because it's, yeah, you know, a lot more people had that mentality in life. We wouldn't uh, probably be where we're at right now. So. Yeah, that outlook. 100%. Yeah, 100%. I mean, and you take that outlook in anything fishing, hunting, your job, your family, your friends. And, you know, it just didn't, uh, people need to chill out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just imagine if everybody didn't worry and they were just happy. It's awesome. It's a power three. I like that one. Yeah, no, that definitely probably be it right there. That's a it is definitely a powerful three, you know what I mean? So heck yeah. One hundred percent. Well, Chris, we want to uh thank you a bunch for taking the time out and again, congrats on filling the freezer today and that was nice. So you get a Three few more minutes in the stand. Three minutes. Hey, I didn't get my glove on. It was awesome. So, that's uh, perfect. That's how it should be. No, but yeah, I wish it was always that easy. But no, you guys rock. Uh, I really appreciate you getting me on and working out. Yeah. And uh, we'll definitely, when the New York swing happens, maybe we can arrange having a beer and maybe a steak together, us I three. Can. You know what I mean? Do something like that. That'd be good, I right? Can, beef or a garbage plate. What'd you say, bud? Get a roast beef or a garbage plate. You, yeah. You, you, yeah, you know it. You know it. You have no idea. The kids love the roast beef. They're oh, we gotta get this. This is it. But these grocery stores, these are the best grocery stores to get the roast like beef. It. I mean, he it, knows it, everything. I, like I don't it. know where he gets all this knowledge, but he's a he's a walking wealth of knowledge when it comes to meat. <laughs> I can see it. No, it's true though. It's true. So. Yeah. He he shot a good mule deer. I saw he posted. Yeah, today. no, he's he had a blast. He had a great time. Uh, we communicated a little bit through the trip because he didn't have that good of service. But he uh, he called to condole me on the whole deer getting slocked by me. <laughs> he knows how, how tough that is. But uh, <laughs> some of the pics you guys probably saw him. Yeah, he really yeah. enjoyed himself because he was able to, you know, he was able to kill some muleys, see some big white tails, and bird yeah, at the same time. And uh, he's with his good buddy and, and, and really enjoyed himself. And like I said, this hunting shit, whether he's locking birds or I'm killing deer, it's a, it's a more of a mental reset. So Yeah, clears the mind. Uh, for for those who don't hunt, they, it's way more than just putting one in the dirt. It's it's getting up, watching the sunrise and, or sunset. And- you just hit it, man. And, you know, getting back in touch with nature, slowing things down. You know, I like doing all-day sits where – you know what I mean? I watch the day go. You know, I watch yeah. the sun come up, the sun go down, and look at some cool animals and roll Peace. from there. So, oh, yeah. Peace, 100%. Well, Chris, thank you so much again. Like, we're, we're going to have to do something when you guys come back up here, but uh, you're always welcome on the show, and we appreciate your time, dude. Thank you. You guys hey. rock. It was awesome. Yeah, that's 20, Thanks, 20, Bailey. Thanks, yeah. Andrew. Yeah, no, let's let's do that. Let's let's, let's make this next uh, time we get on here. Uh, me having a few more than just one beer, you know, we're celebrating yeah. going to the classic. And we'll Hell yeah, man. Out. We'll be well prepared. Be right. good, guys. Bye, Take good care. Time. Have a good night, Chris. Yep. Bye. All right, bye. Yeah, what a good dude. All right. That was a blast. That was, that was a lot of fun. At, uh, I hope all, all the viewers and the, the folks tuning in uh, enjoyed themselves tonight. We definitely did. And it's, uh, Chris is a really good dude. It was a blast to talk to him. And, you know, there's – with fishing, there's there's highs and, and there's lows. And especially as a professional angler, there's no way to get at that level without experiencing a lot of lows. You know, that's, that's how you kind of you, you, know, you are made into what you are at that point. That's why you got to that point because you got to learn from mistakes. And at that level, it's the best of the best. So to try to be successful, it's it's hard. But like he said, those fish were there. It's just putting them in the boat. And, I mean, 
If you put him in the boat, who knows what happens here, you know? For sure. Yeah. For sure. You uh you have any takeaways from, from tonight's show before we uh we wrap it up here tonight? I mean I once again that was a great show. I wanna say thank you to all of our viewers for all the great questions and comments. It was a full house and thank you. You guys are what drive us to make these shows even better. So if you do have any input, make sure you message uh, the Serious Angler page or me and Bailey directly, and we will work on it to input, to include your inputs that you have to make the show a better experience for, 100%. Or for you guys as well. Yeah. Whether you guys are watching on, on YouTube or Facebook as well, we do appreciate thumbs up, share it with your friends, and next Monday's podcast will be given away. It's another, it's the first of... First Monday Night Live of December, so we'll be giving away another Angler Bullseye. And uh, congratulations against the winners that we had a couple weeks ago. I'm getting some messages of people getting their stuff, so we'll be sure to feature those. But, uh, yeah, like Andy said, thank you guys, as always, for, for tuning in. We do appreciate the support, and it's a lot of fun getting to do what we do and talk to the people about their different stories, uh, whether you know their name is somebody that you guys have never heard of or a name that we hear about every day. It's a uh, we enjoy it all the same. It's it's a blast to talk to these folks. And we like to see the feedback you guys have. We like to see you guys come in the comments and ask them your own questions. It's, it's cool to see you guys learn, have a good time. But uh, I think that does it for tonight. And uh, we'll see everybody on Wednesday. You got anything else, Andy? Yeah, man, I'm good. Hopefully I can get the boat out one more time before it really gets cold. So I haven't put it away quite yet, but I'm like this close to doing it. So Heck yeah. Saturday going to try yeah i might try to get the kayak out this week i'm going to put out a uh a setup rigging and then also a performance video out in the youtube channel for our kayak viewers uh for those who are looking to get into an outback uh get some videos out there get some content in the outback uh before i switch over to the pa12 come january when they get those into morgan Ooh. marine so uh if you're in the northeast and you're looking to get into a hobie contact morgan marine ryan over there will hook you up I'm excited to get into mine, but uh, going to get some videos out there. And Andy and I, this uh, coming 2021, we're going to do a better job. Well, not not do a better job because we didn't even do it in the first place, but we're going to start. We're going to begin to make some more fishing videos for you guys. Uh, something a little bit. Some additional content. Catching. We're going to have some fun. Yeah. Some setups, um, you know, bait, you know, reviews. We're going we're gonna to play around it. We're going to get creative. And then, uh, as, as always, you know, your guys' feedback is appreciated there, what you guys want to see. What you want to see, and we will make it our – we'll give it 100% to turn in what you are asking for. Yeah, 100%. See, I'm done with fishing. Josh Dellinger said I'm done fishing for the next two weeks. I got stitches. Oh. Ouch. Stitches are not fun. Hey, you got a right hand. You can fish with your right hand. <laughs> I, funny story, I think I was like – I went fishing with 12 stitches in my hand. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a pretty gnarly scar like right here. I uh, punched through some glass. I went oh, with stitches in my hand. I don't do well with glass. No, thanks. No. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited for ice fishing coming up, getting out there and uh, filling the freezer, not only with venison, but some fish. And get making uh, making use of the uh, open water we have in, in New York before it's the majority of it's gone. Heck yeah! As always, guys, thank you again for tuning in, for putting your comments in, for showing your support and feedback. We will uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Take care. <laughs>